service here this evening and uh, we know that there's a few visitors here tonight with us and also a few folk who will be joining us from the comfort of their own homes. So you are all, regardless of where you are, you are all more than welcome and we hope that you enjoy uh, your time of fellowship with us this evening. There is just uh, also say a special word to the Reverend Ken mm -hmm. for coming along. I nearly forgot, but it's great to have you back with us, Ken, uh, to lead the service. It's just a few things by way of announcement. Uh, first of all, uh, Christmas morning, uh, the service will be here at 10.30, and the Reverend Philip Gallagher will be along to take the service on Christmas morning at 10.30, and everyone is very welcome to join us then. Then next Sunday, there will be no live services anywhere on the circuit. Instead, there will be a pre-recorded district service, which will be led by the Reverend Stephen Scoosh, who is the district superintendent. Uh, the link for the service will be circulated during the week, so you should get the details. And anybody that hasn't or failed to, to contact Nigel, I'm sure you will be more than glad to help you out. I'm sure you've maybe noticed that on the back of your order of service, it says you're warmly invited to join with us for a late supper. Unfortunately, that has changed uh, due to just the general circumstances that we're in at the moment. The church leaders decided that it was not advisable um, to do that, so there's always next year. So um, these are, oh, and by the way, there will be a retiring offering this evening. Dates are at both the doors on your way out, and the offering tonight will be in aid of the Methodist Child Care Society. So these are all the announcements on over to Ken. Prophet Isaiah says, a shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse, from the roots a branch will bear fruit. The Spirit of the Lord will be upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the Spirit of counsel and of power, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. Good evening everyone and welcome again. As Mark has said, thank you Mark for your words of welcome. It's my privilege to be sharing with you in the carol service this evening. It's lovely to be with you again. And uh, welcome to all of you who are here and especially the visitors. And we do welcome those who are joining us uh, either presently uh, online or maybe later on viewing the service. You are all very welcome. We have no idea where, who and where this service will go to. It can go anywhere in the world, really. And uh, that's our privilege now with technology. And uh, we are grateful for it. So, as you see, the service proceeds unannounced. Uh, <clears throat> there, are a couple of, there are a couple of carols, maybe less familiar carols, where it says video. And we ask you just to keep your seats uh, during those uh, carols. If you, if you know them, you can sing along quietly, but again, as Mark says, we're trying, to, uh, we're trying to relax and enjoy ourselves and live as Christian people, but at the same time, we have to have a sense of responsibility and try to prevent the spread of the virus as much as possible. So we, we minimize the, the, the singing, and uh, you can watch those videos and listen to them and worship through them and sing quietly if you so desire. So, uh, after you notice there that after each reading, the congregation responds with the words, thanks be to God. So we join, come, O oh, come, all you faithful.
first lesson is taken from Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2 to 7. Isaiah foretells the birth of Jesus. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. They lived in a land of shadows, but now light is shining on them. You have given them great joy, Lord. You have made them happy. They rejoice in what you have done, as people rejoice when they harvest their corn or when they divide captured wealth. For you have broken the yoke that burdened them and the rod that beat their shoulders. You have defeated the nation that oppressed and exploited your people, just as you defeated the army of Midian long ago. The boots of the invading army and all their blood-stained clothing will be destroyed by fire. A child is born to us, a son is given to us, and he will be our ruler. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. His royal power will continue to grow. His kingdom will always be at peace. He will rule as King David's successor, basing his power on right and justice from now until the end of time. The Lord Almighty is determined to do all this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. 
he will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relation, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. This is the word of the Lord.
third lesson is taken from Matthew chapter 1, 18 to 24, the birth of Jesus Christ. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home to his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Everyone went to his own town to register. 
So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to, to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. This is the word of the Lord. at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. 
When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. This is the word of the Lord. We saw his star when it rose, and we have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he called together all the people's chief priests and the teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem and Judea they replied, For this is what the prophet has written, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod caused the, called the wise men secretly and found out from them the exact time that the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed, and coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. 
Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. This is the word of the Lord. version of the Christmas story, the Christmas gospel, the word became flesh. John chapter 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made, and without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness, testifying that the light that had come to he came as a witness testifying concerning that light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light, the true light that gives light to every person who is coming into the world. He was in the world, 
And though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, he gave the power to become the children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of a human decision, or of a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the word of the Lord. I speak to God. <clears throat> we have enjoyed a lovely evening of worship and reading, but this service didn't just happen. It had to be planned. And we thank Nigel and Charlotte and Mark for contributing the music, but we thank them for organising the service and arranging all the technology and the PowerPoint. I know that takes a lot of time and uh, it's been done as a labour of love, but nonetheless we want to recognise that they have put a lot of work into this. So thank you very much, all of you. Let us pray. <coughs> Lord, we do indeed thank you for this opportunity to praise you. We thank you for this holy Christmas season, this time when we reflect again on the birth of Jesus and all that that meant for us. It's lovely to sing the carols. It's lovely to hear the Christmas story. It's lovely indeed to be in fellowship, both in church and in our homes and families. But more than all of these lovely things, it's lovely to know that a Saviour has come amongst us. When we read the story of the Old Testament, we realize that people struggled to be right with you. They struggled through sacrifice, they struggled through devotion, through prayer, and through all sorts of activities to be right with God. But we're reminded that from the very beginning, from the very first couple on earth, people turned their backs on you. People wanted it their own way and not the way of God. And all of the efforts that people made down the years came to nothing because they could not make themselves right with you. But you decided, Lord, that you would become one of us in Jesus. And we are told that you were in Christ reconciling the world to yourself. So all of us who put our faith and trust in you, as this gospel has just said to us, have the right and the power to become your children. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege of being children of God. Children of God. We thank you, Lord, for the knowledge that we are at peace with you because of what Jesus has done and because we put our trust in him. So, Lord, for the precious truths of this gospel story, we give you thanks. And as we offer our thanks and praise uh, for all that you have done for us, we remember our world. We remember a world of need. We remember all those in our world who, as the carol says, who have winter but no Christmas, who go through the seasons of the year and have no knowledge of what the Christian year means. We thank you that we have a Christmas as well as winter and we have the knowledge that Jesus came to be one of us. We pray too for all those in our world who are without the basics of human life, those who have less than enough food, those who have no clothes, those who are homeless, those who are victims of war and violence and famine. We pray for all who are victims of any kind of violence, even in our own province over this last 24 hours we've heard of more people, two more people being murdered. And murder is an everyday occurrence now, it seems, in our country and in every other. We pray for the people of violence, the men and women of violence, who have no respect for human life. Lord. 
we pray that you would change the attitudes of their hearts, change their way of thinking, change their behavior through the power of your Holy Spirit. And shortly we'll be making an offering for the Child Care Society and we thank you for this society that has been established long ago for the benefit of parents and children who are on the lower scale of income. We thank you that as even in these days, as money goes out to those needy families, it will be a great blessing. It will give them some of the cheer and some of the hope of Christmas that all of us expect to enjoy. So bless all those families, we pray. And we pray for Dave Sweeney and Margaret Copeland as they administer this uh, fund. And we pray that throughout our nation, throughout our country, throughout our connection, people will be generous in this Christmas season and remember those who are less well off. And finally, we remember that we are in a difficult situation again. We can't get away from this thought of the spread of this virus. It has changed all our lives. It has made life so much more difficult for all of us. And it has affected some more than others. Some have been bereaved by it. Some have been very sick and remain sick as a result of it. <clears throat> some have lost jobs and livelihoods and families. All sorts of problems have arisen. Some, particularly younger and older people, have had their their mental health affected dramatically by the isolation and by the unusual lifestyle that has been brought upon us. And so we pray that all of us will be sensible, all of us will be careful, all of us will do our utmost to try to work against the spread of the virus. And we pray particularly for our governments as they make decisions we pray for our health service personnel and we pray particularly for those who have given and given so much over these past two years and continue to give. And many of them are suffering deeply as a result of the extra work and the stress and the strain that they have experienced. But we thank you for them and we pray for them. We pray for your grace uh, to help them in these days of need. And all our prayers we offer in and through the name of Jesus. Amen.
screen says Happy Christmas everyone and may I take this opportunity too to offer all of you and all your loved ones, all your friends, families and neighbours the most holy and happy and most blessed of Christmases. And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and all whom you love this night and forevermore. Amen.